Hey friends, today I want to chat with you about creating beauty in the mundane and I think this is so important especially for homemakers. It's just amazing how we can take the everyday monotonous tasks and chores and really turn them into something very beautiful and so I want to talk to you about that today and show you some ways that I take those everyday chores and try to make them a little bit more beautiful and joyful and I'm just going to take you along with me today and share some tips with you, some things that I have kind of incorporated over the years that have made the mundane that much more beautiful. So the very first thing that I do every single day is make my bed. I read a statistic somewhere about how people who make their bed are happier people. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but um, I honestly do make my bed every day. On this particular day, I we, we always wash our sheets on Saturdays. Every Saturday we strip the bed and I decided to wash the quilt and duvet cover as well. So I'm just now getting the opportunity to put it back onto my bed. But I think that this is so important, just kind of making everything around you more tidy. Anyways, so making my bed is something I like to do every day. Just having beautiful bedding, something so simple, but just, you know, makes that task of <laughs> making the bed um, that much more pleasant. And if you have been um, watching my channel for a while, you probably know by now that I usually like to get ready every day. I uh, put on makeup. I'm not saying everybody has to do this. I think <laughs> I think this is just personal preference, but I just, you know, we homeschool our kids and um, I just, I want to feel like I'm ready for the day. Actually, I did. I didn't do this today. The other day I set up the camera and I recorded myself putting on my makeup for you guys. I have a lot of questions about my makeup and I don't talk about it a lot because it's not an area that I'm super confident in, but I have, you know, for a long time, probably three or four years now, been looking for the right makeup that is not only affordable, but also somewhat clean uh, for my skin. And I feel like I finally found some stuff that I'm really loving. So like I said, this is on a different day that I recorded this. Um, I think it was on a day that we weren't homeschooling <laughs> that I set up the camera, but um, basically I set up a page on my blog with all of my makeup links for you guys. So anything that I use like in the realm of beauty, I linked over there. So I will put a link in my description so that you guys can click on that. And if you ever have any questions about my makeup or the products that I use, head over there and then you can find it on my blog I know that I don't always get to every comment and every question. I do my best, but uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that that is available. So yes, just getting ready every day, putting a little bit of effort into the way that you look. I honestly feel so much better about myself when I get ready in the morning. All right, guys. Well, since I'm talking about my beauty routine and this whole video is about beauty and the mundane. I thought I would share with you one of my favorite beauty tools and that is the Blooming Face Pro. I've shared this with you guys many, many times, but if you're new here, I thought I would just explain it to you. I love this tool. You can see it has some different settings here, but basically the Blooming Face Pro uses microcurrent technology to tone and tighten and decrease puffiness and fine lines in your skin. And what I'm gonna do while I talk about it is just focus on one side of my face so you can kind of see the difference as I use the Blooming Face Pro. Now, what I generally like to do, I don't normally use it when I have a full face of makeup, um, but I like to put on a moisturizer at night and then I will work the product into the skin with my Blooming Face Pro. And I'm telling you what, if I am faithful and using this, you guys, I can really see a difference in those fine lines, especially in my forehead area. I tend to get some harsh lines there. <laughs> and so the Blooming Face Pro really, really helps with those. 
So one of the reasons why I love using it after I put on my moisturizer is because it improves the product penetration. Um, it can also help to remove a double chin. I've had some women already respond to my YouTube videos and say that they have noticed a huge difference in, um, their, in their chin and in their jawline. The product is more than just light therapy, so I'm sure you can hear uh, the buzzing noise. It is vibrating on my skin and it's using, like I said, that microcurrent technology to really decrease puffiness. It feels so good. It feels like a facial massage <laughs> and it's just kind of a treat to use it every night when I, uh, after I apply my moisturizer. So I know that this just seems like an ad and a lot of you might be tempted to just skip through it, but I wanted to tell you guys that for the first 100 people who click the link in my description below, you're going to get $70 off. And every time I share the Blooming Face Pro here on my channel, it always sells out. So normally the Blooming Face Pro is $150, but like I said, with my link, you can get it for $70 off. Plus you get a free ebook with your purchase called Face Tightening Secrets. One of the great things about the Blooming Face Pro is that if you don't see results, you will get your money back. So usually I can always tell when I finish using it, the side of my face is just a little bit more lifted than this side of my face and it just feels tighter. If you are looking for a new tool to incorporate into your beauty routine, you're going to want to try the Blooming Face Pro. I have loved using this and I know you guys will too. So make sure you check out that link in the description below so that you can grab $70 off your blooming face pro. Now let's talk about those everyday chores. I've already mentioned to you guys that I like to use wicker baskets for my laundry, just something simple like that. You know, instead of a plastic laundry basket, using one with a little bit more character goes a long way. I love my beautiful laundry baskets. I've thrifted most of them. But even taking it a step further, if you're new here, this is our laundry space. It did not look like this when we moved in. It was a scary dungeon-like basement. But finally this past year, we put a lot of effort into this space and made even our laundry area beautiful. And I know some of you might be looking at this thinking, oh my goodness, I hate the space where I have to do laundry. And that was me for about, I think like 10 or 11 years. <laughs> I have before pictures on my blog. I have a whole blog post about my laundry area and the before and after. Go look at it. You will understand. But I cannot believe how much more joyful it is for me to do laundry in this space um, after just putting a little bit of uh, effort into making the laundry area beautiful. Now, the same thing goes for the kitchen. I spend the majority of my day in the kitchen, so I really wanna make sure that it's a place that I enjoy, that's very beautiful. Um, just some, something simple like putting your oats and your flour into glass canisters, for example. Something small like that, uh, I've switched a lot of my baking ingredients and everyday items over to beautiful glass canisters using metal scoops, and I've just collected a lot of fun stuff over the years, and I would just really encourage you um, to take the everyday task of cooking. We all have to do it. We all have to prepare food, right? And just try to make it more beautiful. Now on this particular morning, in case you're wondering what we're making, my boys have been loving berries and cream oatmeal. I just took some oats, some water, some milk, some butter, lots of salt, cinnamon. And I'm just gonna cook these oats. We get a huge bag of them from Costco. Organic oats, you always wanna get organic oats because oats are sprayed really heavily with pesticides. And, um, and so organic is always best when it comes to oats. But I let these cook for a long time and then once they've pretty much absorbed all of the liquid, I'm going to add some frozen berries and I'll show you that in just a second. But before I do that, I just want to talk for a moment about washing the dishes. Another chore that we have to do every single day and if you notice, not only have we <laughs> have uh, we switched our sink over to one that is you know much more vintage inspired it's high back sink i have a whole video about that but um also just switching out your faucet to something uh a little bit more beautiful and even 
you know, even down to the dish scrubbers you use and putting your soap in a little, a pretty glass dispenser instead of having, you know, the bottle of dish soap sitting next to your sink. These are all ideas um, that make the mundane that much more beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some frozen berries to our oatmeal and then I will kind of just let the oats, the heat of the oats, sort of thaw out the frozen fruit. I'm just, we keep lots of frozen fruit in our freezer for kefir smoothies every day. Um, and then just topping it off with some heavy cream. And this is such a delicious breakfast. My boys love this oatmeal. Sometimes in the fall we'll do apples and cinnamon, but this berries and cream version has just been so delicious. Now, as I clean up the breakfast dishes, another thing that I would suggest in in the kitchen is to invest in some pretty towels you really like. I like to dry my dishes with my Norwex towels, but I set my dishes also on a towel as they dry. Um, and I also, a few years ago, purchased a little peg rack at the thrift store for a couple of bucks, and we hung that up to, uh, you know, in order to hang up my washcloths and my towels. And I think just something simple like that, instead of, you know, command strips or whatever, having a pretty little peg rack, something to keep an eye out for the next time you're at a thrift store that you could maybe add to your kitchen. Now, on this particular day, we had a huge lunch. You can see the dishes here. I'm kind of skipping ahead a little bit, but I made a big pork loin this past weekend and we had lots of leftovers with gravy. I made some rice to go with it. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just cleaning all of these dishes up. Um, and because we had such a huge lunch, we decided to do something a little bit lighter for dinner. I have a ton of eggs in the fridge and some produce that I like to use. So we are gonna do breakfast for dinner. So I'll show you how I put that together later on in this video but one of the things that i really like to do is prepare ahead whenever as much as possible um so i had some things that i needed to get done this afternoon so before isaiah went down for his nap i decided to chop up all of my uh, bell peppers for the casserole and get all those ready to go and then i also chopped some bacon up into smaller pieces because that's going to go in my casserole as well. I also shredded up some Colby Jack cheese for my casserole and then I'm just going to bag that up um, so that that's ready to go as well. And then I will put the peppers and the bacon and cheese all into the fridge for later. Um, so just prepping ahead whenever I can and then I also just washed some potatoes so that those could dry really nicely and be ready for some breakfast potatoes later on. Now, as I clean our table off um, from, <laughs> from lunchtime, I would just highly suggest if you're able to investing in a table that you really love, a table and chairs. This is a place where your family is going to be gathering you know, many times throughout the day and you want it to be special, you want it to be you know, a place that you really love. And this table was one that my husband built for me out of reclaimed lumber. And it is just so special to me. The tables we got from Facebook Marketplace and I just really try to make this dining space peaceful and um, not too cluttered, just a space that we really will love to gather and laugh together and eat together and so Eating is something we all have to do. Why not make the space where we eat a beautiful space? And um, so that's kind of how I see it. Now, every single day, we lay our youngest down for a nap. And every single day, I make myself a cup of tea. So think about the things that you do every single day. And try to think about ways that you can make those things that much more beautiful. I found this pretty copper teapot in an antique store and I it's just it's been one of my best purchases. I use it daily and even something like the mug, you know, or the cup that you drink your tea from making that beautiful. It sounds silly, but these little these little moments throughout the day can really make the monotonous tasks of a homemaker so much more beautiful. This is just 
uh, a mug that actually a friend of mine made here locally and I don't know it's just these are these are the little things that can bring joy throughout your day and I just I love this little mug and since I do sit for a few minutes every afternoon to drink my tea I also like to sort of tidy things up especially the area that I'm going to be sitting um, you know, just kind of cleaning up the toys, that ottoman opens up, I can throw the toys in there quickly, straighten the pillows, and just like that I can sit and have some calm. Sometimes I read a book, sometimes I just like to sit there and in the, in the stillness. The boys are outside, the older boys playing in the snow at the moment. So I'm just going to enjoy a few moments of quiet time, at least up until the tea is gone. This afternoon, I actually wanted to use up some of my sourdough starter, and I've been seeing a recipe that I've wanted to try for sourdough chocolate chip cookies. I have to be honest, I have always used the classic Nestle chocolate chip cookie recipe. It is our family's favorite. I switch out the flour for gluten-free flour. They're still just as delicious, and that is the recipe I have always gone by. I've tried other chocolate chip recipes, and in our minds, they are never as good as the Nestle <laughs> Toll House cookie recipe. So today I'm going to switch it up and try this sourdough recipe. It's definitely a unique recipe. The directions were not something that I was used to. Um, but I wanted to give them a try since I had some starter that I wanted to use. And um, the dough actually can chill anywhere from 2 hours to 24 hours. And my original plan was to have them chill for the full 24 hours, of course. Uh, just because that would be better for the boys. I can't have these because I'm using traditional flour. Um, but you'll see later on in the video, as soon as the boys discovered them in the fridge, they wanted me to bake them <laughs> that night. So they were only in the fridge for a couple of hours, but the longer you keep them in the fridge, the better, obviously. As I bake these cookies, you can see some of the tools that I'm using, the glass canisters, the little copper measuring cups. These are all things that I've just slowly collected over time to make baking more beautiful to make the whole process just more enjoyable. And as you go throughout your day and you use items in your home, just kind of look at them and, and think about them and ask yourself, how can I make this mundane task a little bit more beautiful? And you'll be amazed at how much it really does affect you when you start to, to make these little changes and transition things over time as you're able to afford it. Now, before I get started on dinner, I just have a little bit of laundry that I need to, to get folded. And again, you can see the wicker laundry basket that I like to use. And generally, I fold my clothing in the living room. But really, you guys, it does make a huge difference if you keep up, if you just do a little bit every day. Just, you know, I think the reason why homemakers get overwhelmed is because... Um, instead of just doing a little bit every day, they wait several days and then the mess seems like overwhelming and they look around and they feel like they don't even know where to start. But I, I, like, I strongly believe in just every day, just pick up a little bit here and there. If you see little piles, just take care of them. And when you do that, I, I promise you, you are able to manage the home so much better. All right, guys, so as I near the end of this video, I'm just going to show you how I made dinner. I'm just getting a cast iron pan out, and I'm going to start to heat it up here, get it nice and hot, and then once it's hot, I'm going to drop that bacon in that I chopped up earlier. So that was super quick and easy and I'm just gonna let that cook and while that cooks and gets nice and crispy I'm gonna chop up my potatoes now when you chop up your potatoes to make breakfast potatoes try to to do even cuts and that way your potatoes will all cook 
you know evenly and at the same time you won't have smaller pieces that are burnt and larger pieces that are raw so I try to be kind of precise when I'm cutting potatoes but you can make delicious crispy breakfast potatoes in the oven and I'm going to show you how I do that so I have some russet potatoes um, left from a bag that we purchased a couple weeks ago and then a few uh I think Yukon gold potatoes actually that I'm going to throw in here as well. Um, but you can use any kind of potato. It doesn't really matter. I just like to season the potatoes with some olive oil and lots and lots of salt. You want to use a lot of salt with potatoes. Um, and then I season them with some pepper and some garlic powder, onion powder, and a little bit of paprika for some smokiness. And um, that's how I season the potatoes and then I'll finish them off with some parsley and make sure that you are checking your bacon and stirring it constantly. Bacon can burn very quickly so you want to stop often and, <laughs> and stir the bacon. Uh, but I'm going to get back to my potatoes, get those all coated and and spread out and ready to go into the oven and I'm just going to put them in the oven at 375 and really you know I don't really keep track of how long they're in there basically what you, you just want to keep track of them probably I would guess 20-25 minutes all right so now that my bacon is done cooking and it's looking nice and crispy I don't have any paper towel at the moment but I had these like paper placemats so I just folded one in half and I'm using it to drain my bacon um, and then I'm just gonna take that leftover bacon grease that's in my skillet and I'll keep some of it don't pour all of it uh, don't get rid of all of it keep some of it in the pan and then I'm just gonna drop in those peppers and start to cook those all right while my peppers are cooking I am gonna go ahead and start cracking some eggs now we love to purchase eggs from my neighbor she has chickens uh, and she always has fresh eggs but during this time of year the her chickens really slow down and so we got some eggs recently at Costco and I'm just cracking a bunch of those into a glass bowl and I like to add some heavy cream to the eggs it just makes your casserole so creamy and delicious and fluffy so that's my little tip for you make sure you keep stirring those peppers though and I also am adding I had a half a bag of frozen spinach in my freezer leftover from a soup that I had made a while back and so I'm just going to throw that in with the peppers and kind of let that thaw out and cook down before I drop the eggs in my pan. So I'm just going to throw the bacon back into the pan and shut the heat off and then I'm going to go ahead and mix it up and pour my egg mixture over the top. And what I'll do is just kind of stir everything around so that it's well incorporated and since the, I, I don't know if I showed it earlier, but since I already added salt to the peppers as I was cooking them, and bacon is very salty as well, I'm only going to add salt to the very top of this casserole after I add some shredded cheese. So here's the cheese that I was shredding earlier. I'm just going to sprinkle that all over and again, kind of mix it in and incorporate it. And then that's that's it really. Now I'm just gonna put it in the oven at 375 with the potatoes and that I'll cook for about 15 or 20 minutes until the eggs are set uh, and we'll have dinner. So I pulled the potatoes out of the oven and you can see they're just about ready. They're already looking beautiful, but I ended up putting them back in, stirring them and putting them back in so they would get a little bit more crispy. And now both the potatoes and the egg casserole are done. You can see how puffed up it is. And oh my word, you guys, this casserole was so delicious. The potatoes were crispy and golden and they are just so amazing when you cook them in the oven like this. And they were the perfect breakfast potatoes. Now I'm just gonna cut up this casserole with a knife and scoop it up for everyone, add some uh, some of the casserole and then a little bit of the potatoes and then we'll put some sliced avocado on there and some bread and we have a delicious simple meal 
and I just thought I would share that with you. So breakfast for dinner, it's always an option. We do it all the time, my kids love it. <laughs> like I said, after dinner, my boys wanted me to bake those cookies, so I got those in the oven while I did the dinner dishes and they ended up being really good. They were different for sure, uh, not what we are used to. I took a bite of one, I'll be honest, even though I probably shouldn't have. Um, it didn't bother me at all, uh, but they were thicker and they just had like a different, you could taste the sour, like the sourdough in the dough, but they were, they were good. My husband said he enjoyed them. I, I don't know that we like them more than the classic Nestle Toll House recipe, <laughs> but they were, they were still yummy and the boys of course gobbled them up with some milk so anyways it was so much fun taking you guys along today and kind of sharing some different ways I like to just create beauty in the mundane I hope I inspired you today and gave you just a couple of ideas some things to think about I just love hearing from you guys will you share with me in the comments how you create beauty in those mundane moments I would love to know all right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.